Welcome to installing Aerospike Community Edition. So this will be an installation on a vanilla CentOS 6.3 operating system. And if I run a uname-a, you can see here that it says EL6, which means that it's CentOS 6. Uh, nothing special has been done to this operating system, uh, but we do have a user here called the com user that has pseudo privileges. So first of all, what we're going to have to do is get the software. And to do that, the easiest thing to do is go to the website, uh, www.aerospike.com, click on Get Started and the Free Community Edition. So if we click on that, what will happen is we'll be taken to the page where you can see the Community Edition, uh, some of the different OS flavors that we support, including CentOS, Debian, and Ubuntu. Uh, and below that, there's also a set of installation instructions that you can click on to. And here you'll see all of the different uh, ways to install the different other operating systems. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and stick to CentOS 6.3. So I'll go ahead and copy the link address uh, right here. And what that allowed me to do is to use a command called wget to get the software. So first of all, let me create a working directory so I don't create a lot of mess. I'm in the com user home directory, and I'll create a directory called aerospike. And if I go into that directory, it's obviously empty. And what I can do now is run wget on that URL. So I'll just paste that URL right into here, and I'll get it. And it came down very quickly because it's a fairly small package. Uh, so here's the file. And now I'll run uh, a tar command to unpack the file. So just run tar zxf on the file here. And it'll go ahead and un unpack it. Uh, and it'll create its own directory in where to place these things. So when you go ahead and look at uh, the, the directory structure, what's in here, there's a subdirectory called Citrus Leaf Community Ser Server. Uh, now you can go into it and see that we have both the server and the tools RPM packages here. Uh, now if you're doing this on uh, Ubuntu, you might have to enter a different command. So let's go ahead and run the command to install this, which is sudo rpm-i minus uh, citrus leaf community tools. And now we've gone ahead and installed the tools package. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the server, which is fairly easy here. We'll just do sudo rpm i on the server package, and that has now gone in. So we've now installed the basic packages uh, used for the Aerospike server, and now we can go ahead with the rest of the installation pack. Now that we have installed the server, let's start it up. The default configuration contains some safe, simple values that don't require modification for simple testing. To start the server, issue the command sudo etsy init.d citrus leaf start. And this will start up the server. Now you might want to check to see is this thing really started. So let's go ahead and run the command, same command but with status as the argument instead of start. And here you can see that the CLD or the Aerospike database is actually running now. You can also take a look into the log if you need to for uh, a string that will tell you that the, the database has started. To do that, issue the command sudo grep uh, cake in the file var log citrusleaf.log. And here now there's a message that says service ready, soon there will be cake. And this is the database's way of logging that it's ready to accept new data. Now before we actually start doing anything with the data, why don't we try taking a look at some of the monitoring commands. So one of the first things you can do is issue the clmonitor command. And I'm just going to do that with a minus u flag. And this will tell me what the different options are. And clmonitor will need to connect to, the, uh, to a node in the cluster. It doesn't matter which one, but one of them. And it'll get information from the other nodes. So the first thing to do is to realize that, well, the server I've got here is actually for 127.0.0.1, or the local host. And I can run this on port 3000. Now when I do that, I get a command prompt back showing me uh, that it's ready to accept some commands for, for viewing of uh, different statistics. So the first one I'll issue is called info. Uh, now what info allows you to do is to take a look at the different nodes in your cluster, and you can see those on the top here, and the different namespaces. And the test configuration we have actually shows two different namespaces, one for bar 
and one for test. Uh, these are different ones that we could use. We're going to wind up using test uh, during our uh, example here. Now if I want to look at some of the other commands in here, I can simply put in a question mark and it gives me a listing of all the different commands, uh, including the, uh, the info one we just entered in. Uh, and the other one that I, I find very useful is the stat command. And the stat command shows you a huge list of all the different uh, parameters that have been set and all the different uh, statistics you can get back. So if you just want to take a look at a single one or a single set of them, you can filter based on uh, the minus V flag. So I'll take a look at, for instance, the object count. So stat minus the objects shows me that in the cluster, in the one node, there are zero objects. So I've got an empty database. And this is a good place to start. So if I exit out of this interface now, I can now try to put in some new data into the database. So I'll go ahead and issue the following command, which is CLI. And CLI, again, has some different options, including uh, the uh, port and the host to connect to, the operation, whether you want it to be a get, a set, or a delete of data, the namespace to go into, uh, the set that you want to put into, and a set can be thought of as like a table in a relational database, the key, the bin, which is the uh, like a column in a relational database, and there's some other options here as well. So as a simple test, I'm just going to enter in some basic data. I'll enter in CLI minus H to the local host again, minus P to the port, and now let's say the namespace is going to be test, uh, the operation is going to be a set of the data and the key I'm going to use is arrow spike and the uh, bin name is going to be name and I will put in arrow spike ink here as the value uh, so if I do that with the value uh, and I press enter now I can see that it successfully put in some data. The key is here as arrow spike. Uh, the value is arrow spike in the, in the bin name. Uh, I can do the same thing now for the address. And so for the address, I will simply put in Mountain View, California, which is where we're headquartered. And for the bin, I'll change that to address. And again, it's gone and successfully uh, put that data in. And then finally, I'll put an email address in as well. Might as well do that. So info at aerospike.com. And the bin name here, I will make email. OK, so I've now put in some pieces of data on a single key. Maybe I want to be able to pull this out again. And so I'll use the same command, CLI minus H. 127.0.0.1 minus p3000. Now the operation, sorry, the, the namespace I'm going to use is still test, and the operation I'm going to use is to get the data instead of to set it. And I'm going to give it the same key that we had before for aerospike. And now what I get back is a set of data. I get the email address, the name, and the address that I've entered in previously. Now if I go ahead and run CL monitor again, and now issue the command stat minus v objects. There's now a value here of one under objects. It says I have a single node with a single object in it. And uh, that, that reflects the new item I just put into there. So let me exit out again. And instead of uh, doing any more inserts or reads, now let's uh, clear this out. So I'll run the command cli minus h 127.0.0.1 minus p3000 minus o to delete and I'm going to delete the the full data for the key that I just entered in and so now the deletion has successfully completed if I go back into CL monitor and again run the stat minus v objects command I can see that I no longer have any objects in this database so I've cleared it out so finally, uh, there's a time that you might need to stop a particular node. How do you stop it? Well, it's very similar to starting. Instead of running the uh, etsy init.d citrus leaf start command, I'll just issue the stop command. And when I hit that, 
it goes ahead and stops the database. Uh, if I wanted to, to do the status as before, it tries to connect to the database and finds that the CLD has stopped. So we have now gone through the entire phase of installing the database, testing it, monitoring it, putting in some data, and finally clearing it out and stopping it. So that completes this uh, introduction. Thank you very much.